Venezuela's United Socialist Party on its fifth Congress ratified President Nicolas Maduro as candidate for the July 28th presidential elections. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu approved a plan to carry out a land invasion in the Palestinian city of Rafah. And Russia's Central Election Commission registered on Saturday over 50% participation in presidential elections. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Lesu Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Venezuela, on Saturday, Socialist Party Vice President Diosdado Cabello announced President Nicolas Maduro as the party's candidate for the upcoming July presidential elections. At a rally held at the Caracas Polyhedron, Cabello said that all of the over 4 million party militants nominated the incumbent president after holding close to 320,000 meetings at grassroots levels. Cabello exalted President Maduro's ability to foster peace and unity in Venezuela through political means, defeating oligarchs by simply setting an example, opening up party membership to all social movements and bringing all sectors of society together through constant dialogue. Cabello said the president has implemented a sort of collective style of leadership. So everybody here that is agree postulated our citizen Nicolás Maduro Moros as candidate of the Socio Party of Venezuela and the Bolivarian Revolution for the 2024 elections big presence for mayoría President Nicolás Maduro aquí está su partido President Nicolás Maduro, it is your party, the party of Commander Chavez. And this party that has its own mechanism is established. So we have a candidate, Nicolás Maduro. On the other hand, Diosdado Cabello emphasized President Maduro's ability to reach economic and social achievements in the midst of numerous sanctions designed to strangle the nation. And in the middle of these sanctions, the blockade, persecution, we have been able to establish a complex, a very open and complex program of economic recovery without help, only with soul, spirit, and the people's will. So with great decisions, assertive decisions, this commander, with his authentic leadership, which is a great support for any country, impulses a sovereign a politics with diplomacy, diplomacy of peace. For his part, the Venezuelan president assumed the candidacy and reiterated his commitment to the Bolivarian people and the legacy of Commander Hugo Chavez. If someone asks me, what is Chavismo? Chavismo is a family full of love for the homeland. For the Bolivarian movement of the 21st century, which is all along with its ideals of every generation. So this is what we is. Love for our story, for our history. But only a man wouldn't be here. I'm here because of you, for your strength for your wisdom. I'm here for the people. And that is why that today, March 16 of this year, 2024, I accept the presidential candidacy for the next election in June. I assume it. And with the support of the people, we will go to a new victory of the Bolivarian forces and Chavez. The Venezuelan leader also reiterated that his candidacy represents an entire people. Chavez is a people 
Chavez is the people. Chavez is everything. And I say, that is not Maduro. Don't confuse. Don't underestimate, underestimate us anymore. Because this is not just one man task. Here the candidate is not Maduro. Here the candidate is the people. Is the worker. The people of the, of the municipalities, the neighborhoods. And with all these people, we go to the battle. We go to the victory. In Mexico, regional authorities have reported the assassination of Humberto Amesca, mayor of the municipality of Pihuamo, in the state of Jalisco. Amesca was shot to death inside his car on Saturday morning. Laura Haro, currently running for governor, said that Amesqua has received threats on his life over the last few weeks. Governor Enrique Alfaro said the police has already opened an investigation to clarify the reasons behind this crime and whoever is responsible for it, and said he is fully committed to solving this murder. In Ecuador, the Truckers Union denounced the increase in insecurity on the highways in the midst of the state of exception and internal armed conflict against organized crime in force in the country. Leaders of Ecuador's Heavy Transport Confederation denounced that at least 10 cases of vehicle theft in the last week. They also warned that although crimes against carriers decreased by at least 70% after the state of emergency was declared, extortions and kidnappings have increased on the highways in the last few days. Therefore, they requested a meeting with Monica Palencia, government minister, to deal with this problem and guarantee them greater security. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different formats, news updates, and much more. All the stories coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back. On Saturday, Israel approved a plan to carry out a land invasion in the city of Rafah. In this sense, the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu authorized the plans of action in Rafah and the occupation army is preparing to expel around 1.5 million Palestinian refugees. With this action, Netanyahu rejected the proposal of a permanent ceasefire made by the Palestinian resistance, which also demands the end of the Israeli siege against Gaza. In this regard, Israeli Prime Minister alleged that Hamas demands are unrealistic and that it is not possible to negotiate the release of prisoners. The announcement came after a Qatari mediator sent him a proposal from Hamas, insisting on the urgency of a ceasefire and the exchange of detainees. It denounced that in Palestine, the Israeli Occupation Army arrested more than 7,600 citizens after the intensification of violence against the occupied territories on October 7, 2023. In this way, Palestinian prisoners' rights organizations denounced that among those arrested were citizens who were in their homes and who were forced to surrender as prisoners. In the meantime, the statement further claimed that Israel increased widespread abuses and raids in governorate cities and refugee camps. In addition, also pointed out that the prison service in Tel Aviv uses torture methods against arrested Palestinians and condemned the silence of the international community in the face of these practices, which violate human rights. The United Nations Children's Fund denounced a 31% increase in child malnutrition in northern Gaza Strip. The United Nations Children's Fund stated that children are suffering from malnutrition, which is reaching unprecedented levels due to the impact of war and the current restrictions on humanitarian aid. According to UNICEF statistics, 4.5% of children in children's and health centers are underweight for their height, putting children at risk of medical complications and death. In this regard, data confirms that at least 23 children have died from malnutrition and severe dehydration in recent weeks. This figure is in addition to the more than 13,450 children killed by Israel in Gaza.
In Ecuador, at least 15 municipalities located on the coast and in the highlands are in emergency conditions as a result of heavy rains associated with the climate phenomenon known as El Niño. The National Institute of Meteorology and Hydrology reported that in the next few days, moderate and high-intensity rains will affect the northern insular region, the inland coastal zone and the foothills of the western mountain range. This will be a result of a rainfall occurred during the last weeks, which caused over a thousand dangerous events in 23 out of the 24 provinces, leaving six people dead and seven injured. We have a functional break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Concern news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean as well as the rest of the world. Stay connected and informed with Telesur. Found your break, don't go away. Welcome back from the South. Russia's Central Election Commission registered this Saturday over 50% participation in presidential elections. On the second day, the electoral body reported over 55 million voters and 80% of those registered decided to use the electronic voting system. Meanwhile, 1,900,000 Russians are expected to vote abroad. It was also informed that since the beginning of progress and with the silence of the international community, Ukraine has carried out a series of attacks against that country's citizens' right to vote in peace. Latin American observers highlight the process of presidential elections 2024 held in Russia. Representative of Colombia's National Electoral Council considered that the innovations in the Russian voting system are useful for the development of the region's electoral system. On the other hand, the Latin American Council of Electoral Experts expressed that the ways of exercising the right to vote in Russia, both in person and electronically, simplify voter participation. In this regard, the Russian Central Electoral Commission confirmed that over 2.3 million people voted early in 42 regions of difficult access. The Russian government denounced a new drone attack coming from Ukraine resulting in a fire at the oil refinery in Samara province. This Saturday, local authorities described that an unmanned aerial vehicle attacked the Sisram oil refinery in Samara, which caused a fire at the oil products processing unit on the refinery territory. According to the information provided, there were no casualties or injuries. This is not the first time the Kiev regime attacks oil refineries in Russian territory. Previously, an attempted attack by Ukrainian forces against another oil refinery was reported, but the attack was successfully repelled. French President Emmanuel Macron said on Saturday that his country, as a nuclear power nation, is ready for any armed conflict with Russia. Macron's statements come after Russian President Vladimir Putin reiterated his position to deploy nuclear weapons in case his nation's integrity is threatened. It must be emphasized that the Russian leader has warned that the presence of Western troops in Ukraine would involve NATO military alliance in the Ukrainian conflict. Britain and France are the only nuclear powers in Europe, but even their collective power is a fraction of that employed by Russia, which possesses the largest and most varied collection of nuclear weapons in the world by some margin even greater than that of Washington's vast arsenals. In turn, the Russian government accused France of already being involved in the conflict in Ukraine. Precisely, the Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov asserted that Macron's administration, in addition to being implied with Kiev 6 to further increase its involvement. In this way, the Russian authorities recalled that in February, France signed a bilateral security agreement with Ukraine for a period of 10 years, which includes the allocation of 3 billion euros in military aid to Kiev in 2024. On the other hand, Dmitry Peskov asserted that it is evident that Russia is an adversary for France and emphasized that President Macron's statements only increase the degree of its engagement. Journalists and media employees in Portugal have gone on strike for the first time in 40 years. They are asking for better wages and salaries, a demand spurred by a massive layoff at the international media organization Global Media. Dozens of Portuguese workers started the strike on Thursday, but since then, many other demonstrations have taken place which have involved personnel from over 20 media organizations. Even the most important journals are running with half the staff. 
and although they have kept the prices running for every edition, the first 24-hour stoppage did affect work in several newsrooms. In the United Kingdom, citizens took to the streets to protest against the racist practices of the current government of British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. The demonstrations were called by trade unions and anti-racist organizations who consider the government's attitude as indulgent for allowing racist statements by members of the Conservative Party in Parliament. They also denounced the practices of the Conservative executive to harm the rights of the Muslim community and to discredit peace movements. Demonstrators also opposed the Prime Minister's attempts to label as hate marches the demonstrations to reject the killing of Palestinians in Gaza in the midst of the Israeli genocide. The Iraqi resistance has rejected a likely government decision of granting immunity to the U.S. forces that remain in the country. The head of security for Hezbollah argued U.S. troops have not changed their behavior, referring to the aggressions against targets of Iraqi resistance. They also denounced that the United States is trying to prolong its presence in the country, despite the fact that the Iraqi government has demanded its withdrawal. Washington still has some 2,500 soldiers deployed, some in Iraq, under the pretext of fighting against the Daesh terrorist groups. But given that the Iraqi government did proclaim the expulsion of the group from its territory in 2017, the demand for U.S. troops has become a national demand. The United Nations warns of worsening food crisis in Sudan in the coming month. The head of the Office of Humanitarian Operations, Martin Griffith, confirmed that close to 5 million people are in a situation of food emergency. The agency denounced the treatment received by the most vulnerable population in special need. Griffith detailed that they estimate that the city of Khartoum will be the most affected by the food ch shortage, aggravating the humanitarian crisis which caused the displacement of 8 million civilians. He noted that the organization can only help less than 40% of those in urgent need of assistance and said that, US, that 400 million U.S. dollars is needed for the regional response to stem the tide of hunger. Mexico celebrates International Sleep Day, better known as Massive Nap. The International Sleep Day is celebrated Friday before the spring equinox, so that day changes year after year. This time, year 2024, it was last Friday, March 15th. It celebrated the revitalization that sleep provides for health and human welfare. Since its first celebration on March 14th, 2008, it has fostered international exchanges and promoted knowledge about sleep, circadian rhythms, and sleep disorders on a global level. Studies have shown that sleeping more on weekends does not recover the lack of sleep during the week. But let's see how in Mexico they solve the problem with one of the most traditional practices in Spain and Latin America, the nap. In Egypt, a group of archaeologists unearthed the missing half of the extraordinary statue of Ramses II. The top half of Egyptian pharaoh Ramses II's statue has been unearthed by archaeologists in southern Egypt at Ashmunein ancient site. The limestone fragment was found thanks to a collaboration between Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities and the University of Colorado. The statue represents the head, shoulders and upper torso of King Ramses II, also known as Ramses the Great. Work is underway to clean and prepare the statues for a possible joint exhibition. Famous for his military skill, he commanded over 15 victorious military campaigns that secured Egypt's dominance in the Levant and Nubia. We have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesorenglish.net. You can also join us on our social media on Facebook, X, Instagram, Telegram, and TikTok. For Telesor English, I'm Luis Alberto Matos. Thank you for watching.